Today, we are going to put free stroke myths to bed. Hey folks, we are back with another video and today we are going to be doing a full brake bleed on a Shimano XT, I believe this is an M8100 brake system. So the big reason I'm doing this one is to get into the free stroke screw. There's a lot of misinformation out there, a lot of unknowns for people out there, and we're going to straighten all that out in this video as far as what this does, how it works exactly, and how you need to use it. Because a lot of people think it's just about screwing this in and out, and it is not. Okay, there's more to it than that, because if you just screw this in and out, you are doing nothing. All right, so that is the goal on this one. Do the bleed, but more importantly, answer the questions on the free stroke screw. Outside of that, there's really nothing else that's complex over here. So typical Shimano brake bleed, doing it my method, the way I like to empty out from the bottom and then fill up from the top. Again, I'm not a big believer in gravity bleeding. With all that being said, Let's get into the tools needed for the job. Okay, for the job, we are going to be needing a brush set in order to clean around the pistons, right? The piston walls. Uh, tire iron or tire lever in order to put the pistons back in after taking them out and cleaning them, right? Then we're gonna have to open things up, right? So we have the three millimeter to, well, actually we're gonna need the three millimeter to take out the pads two and a half millimeter to take out the bleed port, four millimeter to move the handle. As far as moving the handle, we want some kind of marker to mark the position so we could put it back. We need the bleed block for an XT, right? Now I have my new favorite bleed tool, which is this syringe holder. Highly recommend you guys go get one. Turns out Park Tool does sell them separately. I just ordered four. So you can't buy them individually. Uh, we're going to need a reservoir. Now, one thing about Park Tools, guys, if you guys see this, it would be nice if you guys actually made a mount for the reservoir like Shimano has. It's pretty pointless actually having it like this. So uh, it's more convenient with the mount. So just an FYI, we're gonna need a seven millimeter wrench to open up and close the bleed port. We will need a syringe in order to bleed. Um, in order to finish the bleed, we're gonna need a rubber band and a extra hose with a, well, you can put it in a, in a plastic cup or I just put them in a bag. Uh, the additional oil. This is just to make sure that we don't have an air bubble trapped at the actual bleed port at the end, right? We're going to need mineral oil, uh, whatever your preference is. I just happen to choose Shimano. Um, alcohol to clean everything up in the end and paper towels. I don't think I missed anything. I might have. If I do, we'll just go over it during the job. All right. So I had a whole bunch of questions as far as free stroke and how it works and what position it should be in when you bleed a Shimano XT brake, right? So this is the best I could explain as far as how a free stroke works, okay? So the most important thing for setting up your free stroke is getting the lever distance from your finger that is the most comfortable, all right? So once you do that, here's an example of where that line is for this particular bike. They like their lever about 67 millimeters from the edge of the handlebar, right? So right now with the free stroke basically all the way out, if I go to squeeze in, I could bring the lever down all the way to there until I get hard bite on the wheel, okay? So it gives me all that travel distance of my finger before I start biting really hard on the rotor, I should say, not the wheel, okay? So this thing's rubbing, so anyway. So now, let's say I wanted to bring the free stroke in. I'm gonna bring it in all the way. Now, if you notice, the lever will move, right? Now, here's the mistake that by just about everybody makes. They think that it's just about turning the screw in and out. It's not, that's 100% wrong. When you turn the screw in, if you don't adjust the lever, you've done absolutely nothing. Essentially, you just brought down that same distance, okay? What you need to do when you adjust the free stroke is always bring the lever back to the preferred position. So in this case, I have to bring it back out to that line. So now, I don't know what it looks like in the camera, but looking straight at it, I'm dead on the line. Now, when I bring down the lever with the free stroke all the way in, that's pretty much as far as I could bring it before I get hard bite. I could put pressure, it's not going any further, okay? So in other words, I shrunk the distance with the free stroke all the way in compared to all the way out by a solid centimeter, okay? Meaning that 
I don't need to travel as far with my finger now in order to get bite onto the rotor in order to get my brakes to stop. All right. So that's what the free stroke does. And that's how it has to be handled. You have to one, it all starts off by finding the comfortable position for your finger and lever distance. Two, try the free stroke all the way in. Okay. Make sure that when it's all the way in, that the lever is at the comfortable distance. Three, take the free stroke all the way out. Don't remove the screw. Take it as far out as you can. You will see that the lever will move up if you go from in to out, right? But then you have to return the handle to its in, to the natural position or the preferred position. And then feel the difference as far as what is more comfortable for you as far as distance before you can put real bite on your rotors, okay? Next, we will talk about whether the free stroke should be in or out when bleeding Shimano XT brakes. So we just went over how to adjust the free stroke screw. It all starts off with finding the most comfortable distance for your lever, okay? And from there, you go in and out with the screw, and essentially you always have to make sure that you bring the lever back to that position when adjusting this screw. And then it's a question of feel. What's your comfort level? There is no right or wrong answer here, guys. Okay, this is your comfort level. Do you want less distance before you get a hard bite on your rotor? Or do you want a little bit more distance in order to give you a little bit more play before you have a hard bite on your rotor, right? This is up to you and don't let anybody convince you otherwise. So now let's show you what's going on on the inside. This is the free stroke screw, okay? And essentially it pushes this plate. The other side of this plate is rounded and that rounded part hits the piston. So when you screw the free stroke screw all the way in, all you are doing is advancing the piston, okay? That creates a little bit more pressure in the system, which allows you to grip the brakes or bite onto the rotors, I should say, a little bit quicker, okay? So this is the axle that our lever holds on to basically like this and pushes in when we, well, press, apply our brakes, okay? Now this axle sits on this seat. And if you notice over here, right now with the pre-stroke screw all the way in, there is a space between the end of the axle and its mount, okay? So when I bring the free stroke screw out, and we don't want to bring it out all the way, and I'll show you why. When I bring it out, what happens? This whole axle comes back, meaning the whole piston assembly comes back, basically. Okay? And now you notice there is no more room over here. Okay? Now it's sitting all the way in its mounted seat. Okay? So, the free stroke screw does nothing more than bring the piston forward when it's all the way in, and bring the piston back when it's all the way out. That's all it does, which provides pressure in the system. And essentially that pressure is reflected on your lever, okay? So the big question becomes now, when bleeding, do we want the free stroke screw all the way in or do we want it all the way out? So the answer is you want it all the way out. Why? Because simply put, your piston is going to be further in. So you're limiting, there's going to be less oil in the system overall. So if we were to bring the free stroke screw out after that, there will be less pressure in the system. And why have less pressure in the system? Okay, when I unscrew the free stroke screw to its max, and this is too far already, right? I'm bringing the piston back. So this little pocket over here, or this little area of the piston on the inside allows for more oil to go in. So this way, when the free stroke screw, when we bleed with the free stroke screw out, we are maximizing pressure in the system. And then when we bring the free stroke screw in, we are applying even more pressure in the system, allowing us to get better bite on the rotor, okay, when pressing the lever. So we definitely want the free stroke screw out. Now, myth. I've read and heard people say that you bring the free stroke screw out in order to avoid bubbles being trapped on the inside. Guys, 
There is no oil over here. This is all exposed. This is all on the outside of the system, okay? So that's a myth right there. So again, the only reason we want to bring the free stroke screw all the way out is to fully load the system with oil, okay? Now, how far do we take the free stroke screw out? So if you notice right now, if I put the free stroke screw all the way in, Okay, I'm all the way in. I'm pressing down on the plate max. I can't go any further than that. But the problem is if I bring it all the way out, and hopefully this is clear, right? I get to a point where this guy won't move back anymore. Okay, and you will notice that with the handle. Because when you undo the free, when you unscrew the free stroke screw, the handle will move because essentially the whole piston mechanism is going back, which is pushing your handle back. So you Unscrew it to a point where you see the handle stop moving. Done. You do not want to go beyond that point. Why don't you want to go beyond that point? Because if you do, okay, and you try, for instance, and this thing pops out just like the way it is now, and you try and screw it back in, you could now, you have the uh, possibility of jamming the screw between uh, or on the outside, on the edge of this arm over here of this, uh, of this uh, uh, rod, all right? And if you do that, well, you just jammed it basically. That's not a good thing, okay? Like right there is jammed. I could damage it essentially, right? So we do not want to take out the free stroke screw, let me put it in, too far out. In fact, again, there's two ways you could gauge this. One, as you're unscrewing, when you see the lever stop coming out, done, stop it. You do not need to unscrew it more than that. But if we look at it here, let's say if I was to turn it all the way in, okay, or screw it all the way in. Now when I unscrew, okay, I'm gonna get to a point where this thing, you'll see this bar is not moving and that's right over here. So now it's moving in and right here, it basically stops. So at the end of it all, we do not want to screw it out more than two full visible threads. If I do that, I am literally not doing anything. See, now there's a space. And ultimately, when I put it back in, I have the chance of putting it on the side of this rod, damaging the whole system on the inside, okay? So again, you do not want to go beyond two full visible threads when unscrewing the free stroke screw. It does nothing. All the adjustments are within that range, essentially. All right, so hopefully that answers a couple of questions as far as how this works, um, how to bleed, we want it out, just don't take it fully out, and how far out to take it, essentially. All right, next up, let's start servicing a brake. So first we are gonna start off with the caliper. We are going to prep it, all right? So we are going to need to remove one. In the back there is a retaining clip. Take out this clip. Do not lose it, keep the clip, all right? Two, we are gonna unplug the bleed port, all right? Be careful with it. Three, we're gonna take out the pin with a three millimeter Allen, all right? That holds the brake pads. Be very careful with the brake pads. Grab them from the sides, pull them straight out, all right? Put them on the side, inspect them. This one is uh, there it's nearing its end of life. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it has a bit, but needs a little bit. It doesn't have all that much time left. Okay. But I'm going to put them on the side, put them in a safe place where they stay dry. Next, what we want to do is clean the outer walls of the pistons. To do that, we got to push them out a little bit, right? So we're going to grab the brake handle and we're just going to lightly inspect them. These are coming out equal travel if you look at them, right? But we are going to push them out a little bit. I'd say about two to three millimeters right there. See, they're all black on the inside. And then what we're gonna do is, should I have this handy? Take alcohol, spray it in there, grab one of these brushes, a stiff bristled brush, and go in there and clean it well. All right, the whole idea is to try and break up any kind of buildup from dirt, minerals, so on and so forth. 
a stiff brush comes in real handy. Let's do it one more time. All right, let's take a rag, put it through. Wet paper towel. Go through. There we go. Just rub it back and forth just like that. All right, now let's push them back. That's one, went in super easy. That one went in super easy. We are good, let's try it one more time. Yep, they are both traveling equal amount. These brakes are in great shape. So, now we put in our bleed block. Don't put it too deep. If you put it in, put it in the right way, unlike me. And then we put in our screw to hold the bleed block in. Screw it in there. The caliper is prepped. Now let's go up to the lever. For the lever, first things first, we are gonna mark off with some kind of marker where the lever position was, all right? So this way we could put it back when we're done because what we're gonna do is now grab our four millimeter, unscrew it, and basically make sure the port is at the top side, right, the bleed port. Then Actually, I'm gonna have to screw it down because I got a crazy triple remote over here. All right, so not exactly top, but close enough. All right, so next what we're gonna do is we are gonna grab our two millimeter. We're gonna take out our bleed screw. All right, Oop, oil's gonna come out. Yep, a little bit, oops. Don't lose the screw now, very important. There's a seal on the screw. Sometimes it comes out with the screw, sometimes it doesn't. This time it came out with the screw. Make sure that it always stays with the screw. So put that inside because we have a seal on our funnel or reservoir. Make sure you don't strip it, be delicate with this. All right, cool. Now let's go put the syringe in the Caliper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trusted syringe holder tool and I am going to put it on the shock. Actually, let me do it this way so it's easier to remove. All right. Next, we're going to take our syringe. We are going to fill it up. Right. Well, we're not going to fill it up. We're only going to put just a little bit to start with, right? Just a little bit. We don't want to waste it if we don't have to. So literally, this much. Oops, I took too much. I thought I was out. All right. Just fill it up about there. Take out whatever air. Maybe you can see it better from here. All right, I'm taking out the air. Put it all the way to the top. And then I'm going to put it into its port. And I'm going to attach it to the syringe holder. Boom. Done. Just like that. All right, there, make sure you're solidly on there. Cool, now there's gonna be a bubble that's gonna come up. That's the air bubble that was at the bottom. Just make sure that comes up. It doesn't really matter over here at this stage right now because we are gonna go back to the top and empty out, all right? Or fill up the reservoir and then empty out. All right, back to our free stroke screw. We just went over how it works, how it needs to be set up. So now we know that when we bleed, we absolutely want this open, okay? So when it comes to unthreading it, this is all the way locked. We do not want to take it past two visible threads right there. That's it. You don't need to take it anymore. You're taking a risk. You're not doing anything. You're not opening it up anymore, all right? This thing isn't going to open by inches you are literally playing with a centimeter max of, of uh, usability or um, uh, a distance, throw distance on your handle, okay? And all it takes is that little amount to do it. So the free sport screw is open. Now we will unplug our reservoir and we will fill it with oil, mineral oil. Hopefully I won't spill it because this thing pours like crap. 
like I said, it pours like crap. That's more than enough for a front brake. I hate this bottle. All right. Now let's go to the bottom and open it up and start bleeding. Now we take our seven millimeter. We open up the port about a half turn. Doesn't need more than that. All right. And now what I'm gonna do is take my syringe and I'm gonna start sucking up. And the goal is to empty, well, don't fully empty that reservoir, but take out as much oil as possible, right to the bottom. Look at how gray and shitty that oil looks. Holy cow. Already, it's clean. All right, like I said, halfway, pretty much a quarter of this syringe pretty much fills up the system, but I'm gonna keep on going because I'm doing two things again, like I mentioned. I'm not only replacing old oil with new oil, I'm also trying to remove bubbles first shot. Okay. And we are good. We're clean, now let's close the port. Okay, and then we go empty the syringe and then we fill the syringe halfway and we go in to bleed the air out. So we got fresh oil in there now, right? Let's push it all through one more time and see what happens. So uh, open up the port at the bottom, half a turn. Pull up the syringe, always pull up the syringe in the beginning just to make sure you don't get any kind of bubbles. See, nope, that's actually debris, that's not a bubble. Huh. All right, so we're good. Now, once again, we push down. All right, we're looking pretty good there. Now, I'm gonna pull up. Don't pull up too hard. All right, you never wanna pull up too hard, but you wanna pull up. I just caused that, so. All right, and don't empty out the reservoir on top. There's still signs of a little bit of dirt, but that's okay. This thing hasn't been dealt with in quite a while. All right, so as you see, top is good. Now let's try and force it through. Again, give it some good pressure. A bit of a battery heat over issue. Let's get back into pulling it back up. All right, like I said, that's the beauty about syringes. We can disturb everything inside. And we're gonna push down one more time, we should be done. Oh, I saw one bubble come out. Yep, that was definitely one bubble. But you're gonna do that again. No bubbles coming out of the bottom. Remember, don't empty out your reservoir. Give it some good pulses. And flow coming out. Can't, oh, that's debris actually. Okay, I see debris, that's not even a bubble. So we are done at, with the syringe. So next, we take our seven millimeter, we lock down the port all the way, and then we remove our syringe. We don't need it anymore, we are done with it. And we put on our plastic bag, okay? And then at the top of the handle, if you look at the handle over here, we take the rubber band, and we adjust that actually. Put it over the handle, around the handlebar, and then into the handle again. Okay, and then we take our seven millimeter and we pulse it three times. All right, so we go one, two, three, and lock it completely. The whole goal is just to make sure that we don't have any trapped air bubbles down here. And we are done with the bag. As for the handle, we are gonna carefully take off the rubber band, 
put it on the side. Now, what we are gonna do, we still got the bleed block on the bottom. We're gonna press in and see if we could potentially take out any remaining bubbles by moving the lever up and down. <laughs> Shit. Just like that. Wow, that rarely happens. Rarely happens. It's a good thing it's mineral oil. Just keep on pressing it. I see no bubbles. We are good. I'm going to take this guy down because... Take our plug, put them in. I got an odd situation here with these triple remotes, to say the least. Let's give them some friction. Okay, now, let's see if I can bring them up a bit. There we go. Now, take this guy out. Once again, an overheat issue. We took off the syringe. Now we are gonna put, we're gonna top them off, which is the drop of oil. And we're gonna take our screw, make sure the rubber seal's on it. We're gonna put it in there. There will be a little bit of oil overflow. That's a good thing. And we're gonna do this finger tight. All right. Then we grab alcohol and a paper towel. Now that all that is done, let's go finish up the calipers by putting the pads in last because I don't want to take a chance with any oil flying around. All right, let's finish up the caliper for good. So we take out our bleed block. We spray down the caliper one last time real well. We do not want any oil on here when the brake pads go in and make sure to clean your hands. I already rubbed my hands down, my gloves down with alcohol and dried them with a towel. You do not want a chance getting oil on your pads. And once you know your pads are clean, in this case, we have right and left, put the left to the left side. Put these guys in. Good. Put the screw in. Yeah. Turn them in, hand tight, just like that. And do not forget your retaining ring. All right, right here. Bing. And the caliper is done. Now we end it by putting the handle where it originally was. Where's the marking? There it is. And boom. And there you have it, folks. A completely bled Shimano XT uh, brake system. All right, again, this is uh, 8,000 or 8,100, I forget. Um, the whole point to this one was the free stroke screw, right? So I wanted to make sure I answered questions that I was asked as far as how should it be positioned when bleeding? And ultimately people weren't sure exactly how this thing worked, right? So again, all it does is advance the pistons with a piston. So hopefully that answers that question. Again, an easy job, anybody could do it, okay? So if you like the video, please thumbs up. If you dislike the video, please two thumbs down. Um, Subscribe, click the bell, bing, 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 bing. If you wanna see more videos coming or be warned when more videos come out, there will be more videos. Okay, hope all's well with everybody and we will be talking to you all soon. Take care, have a good one, bye.